Masters. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman on this Friday, the 2nd of February, well into the month of February from the way the market's acting. Uh, let's go straight to it. The Dow is down 120 at 38,400. Now, it's not just Apple, but Apple um, is down almost four points. It was down right to the 200 period exponential moving average, which has acted as support. But it's making uh, basically almost like an A to B equals C to D, not Chapman wave notation. This is the lightning bolt pattern, which suggests that Apple could get into the 170s fairly soon. Now, with that said, let's just go straight to this. So the Dow, <clears throat> which is the Dow 30, it's not the Dow Industrials, it hasn't been for a long time, it's just the Dow 30. It's a really great mix of everything that's going on in the economy. For me, it really tells a great story about the economy. Made a new recovery high, an all-time high three days ago, 38,588. Had a fantastic turnaround after the uh, move yesterday to the upside. I have a technique that I call the Chapman Wave Roman Candle. You'll never see it in any book. It's one of the things that I've discovered out of the plethora of um, proprietary techniques that I've developed over the years. Well, not proprietary in the sense that I talk about it all the time uh, publicly. But this almost, I like when you get this really long candle with a, a long wick and then halfway to either the bottom or halfway to the top is the full in, either the uh, body of the candle to the upside or the downside. Then what happens is this is a little bit more than that because the body is a little bit bigger. But what I said to subscribers yesterday, if the Dow is able to hold for about 60 minutes, about 38,500, that should portend a test of the high of uh, the day before, all-time high of 38,588. Well, we only got there for a little while at the close yesterday, towards the close yesterday, and today we've gapped down. And that just says that now, now it's the second day, so this is now basically <clears throat> have to wait for the full day. Anything can happen. I'm looking at the chance that it closes towards the lower end of the trading range right now. Uh, most importantly, and let me just see this for a moment, just to see if I want to get a new position on here. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So just do that here. Okay. So within the context of what we're looking at, in terms of the Dow itself, um, the nine period moving average, exponential moving average, look at this. This is the nine EMA right here. Uh, that, there we go, I dollar INDU. Look at the way that nine period moving average from October right here. I think that was actually November. Yes, November the 3rd, when that green line crossed positive, look what happened. It just kept going up and up and up. And to this moment, right now, as we're talking, that green, even with that sharp pullback going to the lows of the 17th and 18th of January, that green line stood still as a green line, didn't change to pink. But now look what we're doing. What we're doing is we're making this choppy, choppy pattern. And the this is the on-balance volume. The on-balance volume is suggesting that we've got to watch this very closely, that by Wednesday or Thursday of next week, there is a chance that there could be a close underneath the black line, which is the 14 period moving average, and that's a 38,068. So a close under 38, let's say 38,000 in the first few days of next week is a possibility, and that's where we would start to see how the green line, the 9 period moving average, if it's getting closer and closer to the black line, when it finally flips pink, and it will do that when, I don't know. Um, my suspicion is it'll be in about a week's time. Um, that price, the Dow will be close to the 37,700. But all it's doing is basically a sideways consolidation. But look at the S&P. The S&P 
Um, hasn't made it. Look at these tiny candles. This is an S and P that's trading at forty nine thousand and seven forty nine seventeen four thousand nine seventeen. After a spectacular move from that uh, October 7th, 27th low, and that nine period moving average is still strong. But look at these tiny candles. It's telling us that there's some form of a distribution act, a, a distribution activity, and that it'll take a really strong move to turn this into support. So my my thinking right now is that those round numbers are telling me, and I'll go through them again in a moment telling me that fund managers, these are this is big money, are putting in bids to get out or to get in because they missed it, but it's a little it's more hysteria than it is it's prudent thinking. And that's why we're seeing those round numbers. And that just says to me, this is going to be a cap for a little while. But what we're seeing right now, yes, yes, the Q Q Q Q he has the same thing, just these three lines. Green lines, nine period moving average, black lines, 14, and the on-balance volume is suggesting, look at this, right at the exact top, you got the on-balance volume turning down, but that nine period moving average is still strong. So when you get Meta and um, so Amazon finally just digesting these gains, they could still hold very well, but I think the majority of stocks will start to pull back and you'll see some kind of a, a digestive phase. Look at the SMHs. SMHs trading up $1.77 at 189.35. Still strong. Even here, it went for one day. It went pink. And look at it. It's still holding well. But you can see that the technicals are starting to show just a little bit of wear and tear, even though the nine period moving average is still strong. Um, now, and let's go to the IWM. And you'll see, look. We went from green to pink to green, and then now today we're seeing pink in the IWM, the Russell 2000. That's not a good sign, down 294 at 192.56. And you can see basically this is the price of the IWM uh, right here as a, as a line, not a, not a candle, but a line. Then you can see basically uh, fading with the right shoulder pattern at a peak B right now. Uh, I shouldn't say fading, but starting to uh, show deterioration. All right, I want to get out of this. There's a lot to talk about. In fact, I'll do this right now. <clears throat> so SLB is Slumberger. Slumberger, um, a number of people have asked me over the last uh, week or so, is this a possible, especially when it dropped sharply, I think it was on Monday, and there was a question. I said, I don't see this as good chart activity at all, but if you want to get in, I would just like take a little nibble right here, and then I got Jason sent this uh, the, uh, little epistle that goes into a whole thing that they can do drilling now with very few very limited manpower they can do it automatically etc that's fantastic but I'm looking at the chart and the chart says that this always uh, over the decades you watch Slumberger it's just when oil is going higher and oil service the whole area of oil service Slumberger is right there but this is starting to fail and if it's CPF. That, you know, that monthly chart, that is not a great pattern. The monthly chart is still pretty good. So I'm, I'll get back in a moment and we'll talk about Slumberger and I'm going to go to bonds, etc. Be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years 
years' experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back. So we're looking at summer day. And I, all I can say is that the, the chart itself just says with that gap down, and it's had three days since then to close and sharply above the uh, gap down high, and it hasn't done. It's still stuck in the range. I'm going to stay with what I was saying before. If you believe in it, then I'm going to say, say you could nibble here. But the chart itself is saying that it needs a lot of work to have a rally that is sustainable. Um, and it does have big gaps to the upside, and then it fills there. It's done a lot and gaps to the downside. But that's all I can say about Slumberger. So within that context, let me just go to the crude oil. But they, they are related to a certain extent, even though this is a real service company. So <clears throat> exploration, a crude oil, continuous contract, made a peak D, went under the 200-period moving average. And at this particular point, it's just saying ho-hum. I'm not sure about shorting. I'm not sure about going. I would just step aside crude oil, let it do something else before I can get. I, my inclination right now is to say that the 68 level is the 72.61. A test of the 68s at the 200-period moving average is not not impossible it can do that but I, I would not have an opinion about it to do anything right now it's just stuck in the range missed a good opportunity at that peak d using a, a, a close below or at least a pullback under the 200 period moving average to say that's where you could short it um now let me go to my notes because i do want to get to so i i kept many, meaning to uh, mention this all week ever since i saw carbon at the mat so uh, it was a fantastic production. It really was. It was contemporary, and often I think contemporary kind of puts things out of place. They lose the perspective of the period, the, the vernacular of the period. This was done extremely well. At the same time, the reason why I wanted to mention it is that um, the Met is in a very, in very dire uh, economic straits right now. But when you put in a production, just think of this. There must have been uh, – there was – a chorus, there were the uh, onstage people, so that's uh, maybe a hundred people. Um, you have the people that uh, do the um, stage management to, to, for the sets, it's like a hundred people at least. You've got your orchestra, almost a hundred people. You've got the expense of the conductor, that's almost like the orchestra itself sometimes. Um, and then you got everything else that goes to pertaining towards the. Um, I saw this at the on uh, Met Cinema, 
Um, saw it on screen. It was really nice. I like doing that. I've um, seen a lot of productions, and this one was really very good. And there's a difference between the art that people desire and cost effectiveness. So when we're looking at, I wanted to just bring this up to say it was a fantastic production. Now I want to go to, I, I've been to quite a number of this year and more than ever before. I want to go, I've been to the Met Live. It's a fantastic experience. But I just wanted to point out that we are looking at X amount of money being utilized in the market for certain companies and the product that they produce. But sometimes companies can have fantastic everything. They just not recognize. They're not the in group. They just it doesn't it just doesn't work that way. And other times, they could be doing everything right, like a meta right at this moment up at the uh, stratosphere, um, opens at four fifty three point oh one, almost missed a round number. Had a, a round number three ninety eight just a couple of days ago, and here it is, almost a hundred points higher. And so. My, my point was that there are certain things in life that you look at and they are there for, for pleasure. Yes, you can live without going to calm and you can live without the Met. It would be very, very tough for many people, but you can. For a lot of people right now, something like Meta platforms, this is the way, this is their contact, this is what they do. I don't have anything to do with Facebook myself. Um, but it's, it's it, And therefore, you can see that the money goes there and you can see the result. So I just wanted to point out the difference between pleasure and practicality. And now is it practical that Meta should be up at 476? Well, that's what the market's saying. And the market is what the price, that's the price that the market can bear. 476 right now, I'm gonna be watching to see if there are any round numbers. So I just want you to go quickly through this. I have seen so many round numbers. I always looking at round numbers whenever, I, just for decades and decades. What does it mean? Usually I look for it at a major turn that I'm anticipating, either up or down, and it just gives a clue because if those particular stocks that I'm looking at then move on at a low of round numbers and together in unison they, they start to move higher, that just says to me, that is your flaw. For each one of those, that's its flaw. On the upside, because tops rotate, they, they occur not in unison, they rotate very differently. Um, most importantly, I wanted to say that the um, within the context of these round numbers, I don't ever remember actually seeing this many before. I mean, everything, any 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 stock that anybody mentioned over the last couple of days, uh, I'm talking about. Uh, Triple, triple digit or more, maybe not always triple digit, mostly triple digit or more. I'm looking at round numbers. But if they take it out, it means it's important later on, but it's not important anymore. But there are many that, let me just go to this one here, Toyota Motors is a good example. I had made a 202 round number. It went fractionally higher the other day. Here it is at 200. So it just says to me, have a look at that. Keep it in mind. But I'm not making a, a career out of round numbers. I'm looking at them and saying, I've used them before. They've done very well. Um, I, what happens next is, 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 is very important, but it's much more important to be looking at a Marriott um, at all-time highs, Marriott International Resorts. It's much more important to be looking at Sintas, uh, yesterday, all-time high, peak A, peak B, leg C. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, leg C. Um, leg D in the weekly chart, all-time high. It's much more important to be looking at the, uh, um, what is it, URI. Let's see where that is. I haven't looked at it for a couple of days. URI had a 650 round number, and now it's trading at 647, but it's still holding this to Chapman Wave Falling X formation right here. So I'm not going to get too carried away. But what is important to me is, you know, I have this expression where the semiconductors go. That's where the general market is going, should go. And what are we looking at here? We're looking at the semi. And this includes NVIDIA, SMHs, having a decent day today up to at 189.65. But the high that was made uh, late January at 195.90, why is that not being taken out? 
So this says to me, it's a hint in my work, that this is to say, watch this closely. We're going to make a peak D in the weekly chart, unless something spectacular happens by the end of the day. Therefore, is semi, are the semiconductors, is this SMH giving me a clue to say some kind of a digestive phase is going to unfold? And my impression is we are looking at that, but it's, so far it could be just a high-level um, a high level displacement where you're talking about profit taking and like Microsoft, uh, Microsoft, oh, look at that, Microsoft up forward 408, having hit a 415.32 all time high. Chapman Wave Roman candle, this is the second day, I didn't even mention that to subscribers. We're going to it when I get back. Dow's down uh, 93, uh, SP's up 17. Be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So, Microsoft is trading at 407.82. Um, I'm I'm going to put in a rectangle right here from the high of 415.52 and the low in the 390s right there. And that, to me, says we should be in this pattern for a little while. Is it a consolidation before it goes to new highs? And that's really what I needed to, to look at by the end of the day. Is this a rotational correction where 
Let me just look at SLX. This is the uh, steel sector. You see the steel sector had a very nice balance, but it's only a balance is giving back that 32, down 32, 69, 33. Let's look at Newmont, uh, Newcore, one of the great uh, steel companies. Almost an all-time high recently. It's in this big rectangle that says you can rally to just under or just above the previous high. Then you've got to be careful. And so far, it is it's it's down a dollar fifty one at one eighty four eleven, um, but this is a leg C in the weekly, so that is a good sign, uh, and I think that's what you can see in many of the areas that some stocks in the same sector are not doing as well as others, and you've got a couple of leaders and you've got a, a lot of stallers, so that's really important. So let me just uh, do this. Um, Zip wants to know about Annette, A-N-E-T. I want to do that one because it's often, uh, it's, it, it's just been a steady climb. Yep, there it is. Oh, this is one that had 260, then 265, then 260 again, round, number high, round numbers at highs, all-time highs. And then what does it do today? It pops up and it's a 275.90. So that just says to me, this is like a magnet area, 260, that even if it goes high, it's going to come back. Even if it goes lower, it'll come back. It's, it's important. But at any point, if it starts to cl close significantly under the last uh, 260, that's this one right here. That 260, yep, it is. Yeah, 260. Under the last 260 um, level, it goes to 257, it starts to fill in the gap. That could be it for a little while. So Arista Networks, uh, yes, it's making a very nice move today. To me, the technicals are saying it's getting somewhat overbought on a short-term basis. The weekly chart is still looking fabulous, but even there, the on-balance volume is very overbought. But the stochastic flat at 95%, and no short, just to say a little digestive phase is possible right here. And in fact, A, B, G, S, C, right here. Um, it's holding very nicely. Okay. Um, oh, looking to add or maybe options. Yeah. Oh, add on the upside. Yeah, I think call option call options at this particular point. If anything, I'd be looking because you're talking about options as insurance. If you have it, I'd be looking at puts. But I'd wait until next week Tuesday. Let's look at it together because at that point you you could get like a. Uh, 275, if there's, if there's such a thing in the not not 270, but 275, put for the monthly. That'll be the 20. That'll be the 16th of February. To me, that should work out very well. Okay, but in the meantime, I know you're looking uh, as if it's still strong, and I agree with you. Um, just a couple of questions. Wait, 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 something happened. Somebody said, that's terrible. Uh, looking at somebody. All right, I don't know what that applies to. Maybe it applies to someone in the den having an issue. Okay. Um, all right, let's just get back to what I want to look at here. Now, there's a chance that Larry's lost his voice. Um, he hasn't been feeling great, but um, yeah, he's had COVID, but he's, he's lost his voice. So he, he's kind of ready, but he's got, got no voice. So if this program is going to be repeated, at uh, 1 o'clock, I, I just don't think I'm going to be around to be able to do it live. I would love to do it live because this is such an interesting session. There's so much to go through that it would be nice to have another hour to go through it. But in the meantime, I want to do this real quickly. Look, wheat. Wheat has got this Chapman Wave down channel. It's gone into the inside track. I call this the inside track. Look, make that green. Uh, make that red. So this is pink right there. It's gone into this. It's up one at 602 and a half. But as I'm looking at it, it's making lower lows and lower highs. Um, but this is the first time that the MACD's improved. The stochastic is okay at 59. The on balance volume is quite good. And the 9 pre moving average could be close to turning up. So if wheat is able to <clears throat> close, that's on a daily basis, above 6. 14 right now it's at 602 that'll be a break of this in chapter wave inside track repellent zone and if the 9 pin moving average turns green then we can go to the next resistance up at the top which is at six six seventeen and a half of the continuous contract soybeans 
Uh, this is trading very poorly down five at 11.98 and a quarter. It's got the dreaded H pattern. It's already failed. It's gone below. This is not a good looking pattern. It looks to me like the um, 23.6, uh, 23, um, 23, what is that? Yeah, 23.6 level uh, would be 11.84. Looks to me like that's going to be a key support level. If it takes that out, the monthly, which has gone to a peak D, <clears throat> and the nine period could very well in February turn negative. So this is something to watch. Corn, uh, corn is trading also very negatively. It is on the 200 period moving average. It's stalled there for four sessions. This is four weeks, and it doesn't look very strong right now. What it needs to hold. 4.35. It's at 4.44 in the continuous contract. A close under that says, uh oh, low lows and lower highs. Now there's 200 period moving average in the weekly chart at 4.43 is going to be a magnet line. It can go under it. It'll probably come back and test it. You can go over it and test it. This is really 4.43 is your mag uh, ma magnet line. And the monthly chart says, oh, lower lows and lower highs. Not too much to see here on the positive side. It's, um, Sugar is all part of the DB agricultural um, uh, agricultural fund, which we have. And it's actually doing very nicely today. It's right it's stuck at a peak D. Remember in the Chapman Wave, you want to get peak A, peak B, peak C. The fourth highest peak is peak D. That's where other things can happen. That's when it can stall. And it has, and the 200 period moving average where it is right now, 23.78. Um, this is the sugar number 11 continuous contract. Um, it's stalled there. It is holding okay, but it hasn't got the, the gumption or the strength right now to get to the 25. Watching it closely because a close under 22.80 says, uh oh, that's a big problem. Next question I had was uh, so um, now look at this. This is interesting. Cocoa. So cocoa is screaming to the upside. This is a peak. This is a, oh my. Um, four, four point eight, three, five, four point eight. Oh, oh, look at this. We're in leg D. Remember, Chad, if you want to get to a D, that's where other things can happen. That's your target. If it's a buy signal, upgrade to a buy mode. So that's your A. That's your B. That's your C. And there's your D. We're in leg D right now. Leg D in the daily. Leg D in the monthly. Only a leg A in the month, in the, the weekly is D. This is still a leg A from the low of 2020 in 2022. It's a area. Unbelievable. 2025. 2250. Coco. So let's have a look at Starbucks. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so we were looking at, uh, so, uh, yeah, just for those of you looking at the mini, this is now an E in the uh, one minute chart. Leg F in the five and a leg D. Finally, you got your leg D in the uh, 10 minute chart. Uh, trading very given. Can't get, yeah, it's getting back almost all the 8.30 smash to the downside uh, lost, and now it's coming back very nicely. So, that that's this is what I'm looking at. And I, I don't know if I want to get in front of anything here. So, uh, we have longs, we have. Uh, Two short positions, really tight. Uh, no, we haven't got. We've got one short. Sorry, one short position. Uh, uh, semiconductor short position. Main uh, tiny, tiny little loss. It actually made money, and then it made, took a. I raised the stop. Took a tiny little loss. Um, and one of the reasons is, as I say, I'm looking at this to say, are the semiconductors telling us that the semiconductors have a fantastic close today? That's going to be something else. But if they sort of stall here, it says this rotational. A type correction with uh, someone said in the den. I think Jimmy said it. Uh, uh, what? Did he, uh, where was it? He said Nvidia, Amazon, Meta, Microsoft, Sunshine, Apple, Google, Tesla, Moonshine. Yeah, that's exactly what's happening right now. So okay. Uh, so saw about three days ago. Must have had some kind of story out, earnings or whatever it is, and has screamed up to about the 98 level. Now it's trading at 92. So if I'm correct about the uh, way Coco is acting, I don't know. They could be hedged. They could be all sorts of things. But wow, this is telling me that the whole thing, Coco continuous contract. Yeah, um, this is really something. What a move uh, in, in such a short time frame. Uh, we're looking at uh, just from January. Wow, I can't believe it. Look at this. January the 9th. Is trading at 4,092 in the continuous contract. We're at 4,969 right now. That is very, very strong. So we'll see what happens. Meantime, back at the ranch, um, what we're looking at is live cattle, LC, live cattle. Uh, just been on a very strong move to the upside. Uh, alternate count. So this says we've got a GSC here in the daily chart, a B in the uh, weekly chart, and a nice bounce from that major peak F top at uh, continuous contract high up in the 195 area. Comes down to this is a big move uh, down to 165, and now it's trading. <clears throat> it's about 50 percent. It's regained about 50 percent at 163. This looks very good and. Uh, Live hogs, uh, whatever they call it, LH, uh, peak A, peak B, peak C. Yeah, this is actually running very nicely. 97.29 is the 200 period moving average. It's at 83.87 in the continuous contract, uh, and it's called lean. <laughs> Not live, but lean, lean hogs. Um, yeah, so, and the monthly chart doesn't look that great, but the weekly chart is, 
is it says it could rally from here to about the resistance that it keeps going to and then gets repelled. So um, wood is the iShares Global Timber and Forestry ETF, and that has had um, a very sharp move to the downside. Uh, and that's International Timber and Forestry ETF. This is not so great. Uh, we're looking at uh, right under the 200 period moving average as we speak, high grade copper. Uh, this is now trading down sharply. ABC failed at that C so far. Right, the, I told you um, last, uh, for weeks and weeks, I've been saying, look at the 200 period moving average, the magnet line. It goes over, it goes under, it goes over, but it keeps coming back. And right now, it is in the weekly chart, fractionally under it, and the daily, fractionally under 3.5. 8.4 area. It's at 3.83. So got to look at that. Uh, what else? I had it all written down. Oh, that's right. So um, banks. So look at the XLF. The XLF trading at 38.90 up 8 cents. It had a really strong move from the October low. It's gone from the 31s to the 38s, seven points, it's a, uh, it's a 20, just over a 20% gain. And the weekly chart, all the technicals are strong. On balance of volume is a little overbought, but the stochastic at 96% is exactly what you want. That's a good sign. And you've got the cup, sorry, the ball formation in the monthly chart that says 41.70, the all-time high on the in January of 2022, down to 29. It's a big pullback. Uh, in, in October, um, this is a good comeback, and it takes its time, but each leg up has been quite considerable, and I'm suggesting to you that in 2024, we will see the 41s, in fact, higher than 41s hit. But here's the issue, KRE, and the question came up, what about the regionals? <clears throat> well, it's really important for mom and pop banks. Uh, not they are, I wouldn't call them mom and pop banks uh, technically, but just in terms of the huge money center banks, is a uh, mom and pop banks. S and P regional banking ETF trading up 31 cents today, 48, 47, right on the 200 period exponential moving average. Trying to treat that as support, almost a chapter wave Roman candle there. So far, the action's been pretty good. But what's really important. The 53.90 200 period moving average in the weekly chart has been a repellent. It should become a magnet one more time, and it hasn't been. I want to see the KRE moving strongly with the XLF. I need to see the banking system moving very, very well to the upside. And so far, there's a very big divergence. It's almost a divergence between IWB, this is the Russell 1000, which takes the Russell 3000, the best of the 3000, puts them together, uh, testing the most recent uh, all-time high. Actually, it's all-time high at 270.66. 267.13 was the high back in, 20, I think, January 2022. Um, and the IWM. So that's the 1000. But the 2000 is looking, ah, oh, doesn't look good at all. It's really struggling. So um, that's the same kind of difference. But I want to see in, we are now just going into February. I would like to see by the first or second week of March, no matter what happens in the interim, I very much want to see the IWM trading on a weekly basis with 210 as support. And we're at 193. That's a big ask. That's above the 205.49 high of December of this year, of this past year. And um, that would start a leg D in the weekly chart. Uh, 205.50 would start a leg D, and then that should start continue going higher. So I don't like this divergence, but it's important in the market to recognize it and then to trade around it and do whatever it is. So the reason why I had a question about... <clears throat> Why would you think of shorting the best of the best, like the semiconductors, which you always talk about as leading the market? Is because if I get a good sense of what the semis are going to do next, if they are going to be weak, then there's a really good chance that this will be where the weakest indices, like the IWM, gets the big test. And if it starts to break key support levels, it can go down very sharply. 
much sharper. And that gives you a sense of how you can be in the best, but you could actually increase shorting positions in something like the IWM if it fails, but it hasn't yet. So this is, uh, okay, we've got a break coming up, then I've got a final segment. The Dow has now come back very nicely. It's only down 47, S&P's up 28. Be right back. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So a question about FXI. FXI is down 50 cents again. That's the uh, iShares China large cap ETF. I think it's getting very close to a balance attempt, but at this particular point, it's looking quite poor. Um, so let me just do a summation uh, right now. I, I'd say that I, I will try to 
uh, do the one o'clock if I if I'm able to. I've got a, a meeting and I just don't know when it'll finish, so I don't know if I can. So let me just do this overview. <coughs> Excuse me. The Dow sort of stalling here. Nothing technically wrong, um, other than to say there are some indicators that are just saying it's overbought. What do the round numbers mean? I'm going to do work over the weekend. To, to, to see how many stocks have gone over their round numbers, how many have not. But the number that I've seen at highs or within a day or two of their highs, it just, I, I don't remember ever seeing this before, except in the uh, housing sector back in 2007, 2008 period. But I don't think there's a correlation here at all. So the technicals are still strong, shorter term, it's just like the digestive moment. And we're going to be watching it very closely. I'll see you. Otherwise, I'll see you on Monday. Have a great rest of the day and a great weekend. Check out my video called Daily Newsletter. Stay tuned.